Hello, this is episode 21 of the Alphology 2 podcast. Welcome back. Thanks for listening. Good to have you on board and good to have you here. This week, I'm going to be talking about funky ways to save the planet. We've done a bit of this before on the podcast, actually. A bit of environmental stuff in the past, but we press on with that. Probably, unless I have any really genius ideas, will be the last environmentally based episode but yeah so I'm gonna get all all out of my system on this particular episode so look look at funky ways to save the planet so inventive ways which we could implement to improve the state of the environment and when i say inventive i mean mostly just ridiculous but maybe some of them are quite entertaining and there's some sort of rationale behind some of them some of them are just nuts anyway i'll dive straight in no no further ado we'll just we'll get straight in uh the first one actually it's not not my idea i saw it on the internet the other day but i thought it was good so i'm including it at the top of the list here and it sort of takes um inspiration from The Great Escape. I don't know if anyone listening has seen The Great Escape. It's a great film. You should probably watch it if you haven't seen it. And what it's about is it's about British prisoners of war escaping from a Nazi prison in the Second World War. So what they do is they dig a tunnel under the camp. So it starts from, the I think it's the toilets of their of their huts where they live and, and obviously the tunnel finishes outside the prison and they crawl through the tunnel and then they escape that way. That's how it works. But basically they ran into a problem where they had this big long tunnel and obviously they displaced a lot of dirt. And as a result, they needed to put that dirt somewhere, but they had nowhere to put it because they weren't allowed to do what they want because they were in prison. So, <laughs> Uh, and, and if the, the Nazis would have seen them with the dirt, then they would have said, well, why have you got so much dirt? You're digging a tunnel. Stop that. So they had to come up with an inventive way to get rid of the dirt, of which there was a lot. And what they, they were allowed to do, some recreational stuff. It wasn't like a concentration camp. Like they were allowed to like play board games and uh, play sports and garden and that's what that's what they did they, they they were gardening and they would put the soil into bags and have the bags in their trousers and as they were gardening they'd have put a little string on the bag and it would release the soil through their trouser leg into their little allotment plot and as a result that's how they they pushed all the soil through and no one was any the wiser at all. So what they did is they essentially just distributed it slowly. And this idea, I, I reckon, has a little bit of a equivalence with that in The Great Escape. What is suggested is that everyone should have a two-liter a two-liter bottle of seawater that they own to help combat rising sea levels now i don't know about the maths involved as to how much seawater we need to take down to combat rising sea levels but i guess it would be a start you know if there were like 20 billion liters of it uh, in people's houses so everyone has to have uh, a two liter bottle full, filled with seawater and obviously that's gonna gonna keep the the seas down a little bit and i thought we'd take that one step step further very much like the great escape you're taking it from one place and then you're redistributing it somewhere else quite evenly so that the impact of what you're doing isn't so great so that's where i saw the equivalence there and i thought that we could add an extra dimension to that whereby we could get so the two liter bottles that they get or any bottles that they get they they could be retrieved from the environment so like plastic ones so you get a two liter plastic bottle of water. Well, I presume what used to be a bottle of water could be a bottle of anything. And then you repurpose that bottle into being one of the vessels for this salt water that everyone's going to keep. 
So I reckon that's actually quite a pretty good idea. Might might work. Might have a small impact. If it's a one percent impact, that's 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 a lot. So make everyone have that that two liter bottle of salt water. Uh, next on my list of of ideas, uh, it sort of goes away from that actually, rather than the the redistribution of all the water. That maybe we should get water and fire it off into space. So the sea levels are the, so what ha- used to be contained in ice, which is now melted, which is now in the sea, which is pushing the sea levels up. Take that much water out and just fire it off into space. Which I don't know why we don't do do that with plastic. To be honest, maybe it's because it's too expensive. But in the future, just shoot it off into space. No bother. And then then we. <laughs> so this is something I again. This isn't an original idea, or it sort of is. But I, I was given very clear inspiration. I was listening to the Shag Married Annoyed podcast, which is fucking funny. I'd recommend it. And they were talking about a hotel which offers sex toys. You go into the hotel and you can ring the reception and say, oh, can you send me up a dildo? And then they do. And that got me to thinking, well, if more people shared sex toys, then there'd be less plastic waste, wouldn't there? So either share your sex toys. So if you know you live in a house with three girls, share a sex toy. Don't all have one each. I know like different women have different needs when it comes to that. Um, when it comes to that, but you know, if you've all got the same needs, then uh, just share a sex toy. Share one, you know, rubber ten-inch black cock. <laughs> between between three of you. So look, that's that's my suggestion there. Or you could buy second hand. We could have some sort of uh free cycling situation. Or like you could take the charity shop. So you get a second hand dildo. As long as you've given it a wipe down, then it should be fine, shouldn't it? Like, you know, they're made of plastic, stuff just runs off it. Just give it a wipe down, it'll be fine. Like second hand sex toys, think about it. Uh, another one, a big problem with people is that we're sort of like cunts and um, it's our way of life and our destructive way of life. And a lot of consumerism is what's destroying the environment. It's the needs of that system. So basically we do too much stuff and the, the, the earth has to pay for us doing that stuff. So as part of my funky ways to save the planet, everybody should have one day a year where they're made to, they're forced to, just sit there and do nothing in the dark. So not allowed to turn the light on. Maybe you could re- you could bring a book, but not a new book, an old book. And so no electricity. Maybe you're allowed to eat or you, you're only allowed to eat vegetables, I guess. But basically you have no carbon footprint for that day. You just have to sit there and do nothing. And everybody in the country or the world is is forced to do that once a year so you, like jury duty it's like oh sorry i can't can't go to work today i've got my my day of sitting doing fuck all it's legally mandated i gotta do it and you know that that would like decrease emissions from people by like what 0.3 percent so that's pretty good isn't it like 0.3 percent fewer emissions per year, you know, that's a freaking big effort just just to have everyone sit there and do nothing for a bit. You know, I reckon that's that's a winner, that one. Uh, there's a few of these, which is everyone should be forced to do stuff. So we've had everyone should be forced to have a plastic bottle filled with seawater. Everyone should be forced to have one day off, off a year where they do nothing and sit in the dark. And now I've got another one. Everybody should be forced to own a peace lily or other oxygenating plant. So peace lily is famously very good for uh, recycling oxygen. So they they take bad chemicals out the air and push out plenty of oxygen into the room that that they, that they're in. Uh, obviously, that is good for the planet. So if everyone was forced to have a peace lily or other plant which does the same thing, not not solely kind of discriminate against all the other plants, but if everyone had one of those. That would make a, a, a sizable difference to, to recycling greenhouse gases and getting more 
sort of oxygen in, in there. The only problem is, is that peace lilies are significantly smaller than trees. So I do understand that there might be an argument to say, yeah, maybe we just plant more trees. Maybe we just plant more trees. That 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 might be better. But in the lack, but if we can't do that, then everyone should just have a peace lily instead. And also, there's something very therapeutic about keeping a plant and feeding it and keeping it alive. It, it's good for the soul, so that'd be nice. It'd be good for the collective mental health of the nation. Oh, yeah, so look, let's move on to our dietary needs. Everyone knows that our dietary needs pretty much are one of the main causes of climate change. Uh, everyone is aware of the whole beef thing, that cows do a lot of farting, and it, it clogs up the atmosphere. In addition to that, they require a lot of space to live, which you know could be trees. And... They require a lot of food and water because they're fucking massive cows. So lots of resources go into feeding them. And all those resources could be put to better use. Ultimately, meat is bad for the environment. That's 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 what I'm getting at. Uh, so meat should be created in labs. So like the cells should be built in a laboratory and then like put together into steaks so we don't have to kill the animal which is probably more ethical anyway and actually this is something which is under development uh by science science is developing it right now and i think they've managed to do it they've managed to like create like a few steaks but they cost like a hundred grand each so it's not worth it but you know once it gets available to the masses you know you could grow those steaks in a very short very small space in a very short period of time and they taste just the same if as long as it's made out of the same cells like you know you have a cruelty free environmentally friendly option there so meat created in labs would be a lot better than meat created in fields so that's the plan and we'll connect that into another sort of eating habit one and again, this is something I heard on, on, a, on a different podcast. It was the, the Blind Boy podcast. He was talking about eating insects. Obviously, people do eat insects at the moment, but not on a regular basis. Like you might have like a lollipop with the, the insect in it, or you might eat it when you go to Asia. But what the idea is, is that as long as you don't eat them whole, because that's a bit weird, and you just eat them, it's a, you grind them down or you yeah, so you tend, I think they turn into flour, and then you put that flour in stuff. Uh, insects are, are very good for the for the environment. They don't require a lot of feeding. They don't require a lot of space to live because you can grow them in vertical panels, I think. So, yeah, eating insects, if everyone sort of just got off their fucking high horse, if everyone just stopped panicking about the idea of eating an insect or people weren't so grossed out by it, It'd be fine. I've eaten fucking sheep's testicles. You know, I've eaten, I've had that, and that is particularly grim. But I was not that gross, not probably not as grossed out by that as I would be at eating an insect. So maybe we all just need to fucking grow up, realize it's not that weird. It's no no more weird than eating prawns, and fucking crack on and eat some insects. Uh, look, would be remiss of me to not mention a couple of the previous ideas we've had in this podcast uh so there's ego terrorism go back and listen to that uh, i think that was episode 15 eco terrorism that was about how people should be or should support terrorists <laughs> uh, but basically how extreme action should be taken in terms of getting governments and corporations to change their ideas about the climate. And that involves protests, that involves strikes, that involves lobbying the government, but also it involves action from individuals. So, you know, disrupt companies that damage the environment and also do do what you can so guerrilla gardening where you go and plant stuff on like roundabouts and bits of public land where there's nothing planted on it's just grass you go and plant something on it my idea for eco-terrorism 
was to break into like stately homes where they have acres and acres of grass and plant trees in there. That would be my particular form of eco-terrorism. So we did a podcast about that. Go back and listen to that. Uh, another one, compost dead people. We spoke about this in the podcast a couple of weeks ago, but I think it was two episodes back. When people die, compost them or, or reuse their bodies for something to help the environment. Very good. Listen to that episode. Uh, it's particularly fucked up. And, you know, in the sake, for the sake of ecosystems and biodiversity, we'll go back to, all the way back to episode three. Let fucking pandas die out. Stop wasting so much energy trying to save pandas when we could save other species and put those resources towards something which is actually going to work and therefore help ecosystems around the world, which would support a better planet. Speaking of animals... This is something bugs me anyway. I just wanted to get it in the podcast, but this is a good time to do it. Feed your dog leftovers. Don't feed them dog food. First of all, it's better for the planet because you you know you're not buying. First of all, you're not throwing food away, so you're not causing as much waste. You're also not causing waste for the packaging for the dog food and you're not going out specifically to buy dog food and the food that you throw away is there anyway so that's all that's all great for the environment but just on that note people get really fucking snitty about this they'll be like oh no you have to feed your dog fucking premium beef chunks from pedigree or whatever it fucking is Oh, fuck off. Dog food didn't exist till, I don't know, what, 50 years ago. And people have been keeping dogs since since dogs were a thing, since we domesticated dogs, which was, I don't know, probably, I don't know, was it like 100,000 years ago? That's a guess. Even if it was 5,000 years ago, doesn't matter. <laughs> we, we've been feeding them our leftovers. That's, that's how they survive largely the sort of non-hunting obviously hunting dogs might eat a bit that they've caught but largely domesticated dogs would be eating food would be eating food off our off our plates would be having their leftovers that the humans didn't want or or the bits and pieces that they couldn't eat yeah they had the, the 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 meat off the bones and stuff like that so ever since the dawn of time ever since the beginning of the relationship between human and dog They've been eating our leftovers. And and now, as soon as there's dog food, people think that that's the perfect thing for them. Nutritionally, dogs must be fucking all right eating off our plates. Otherwise, they'd have died out. So I'm absolutely 100% sure that you should feed your dog leftovers. And also, if you've fucking seen dog food, imagine having to fucking eat that every day. Imagine having to, you know, having that jelly crap scraped out of a tin into a bowl that you have to fucking eat off the floor. Absolute fucking horrible, you know. Whereas, you know, a bit of sausage and mash. Don't mind if I do. So, that's that's my little soapbox on that one. Ah, oh, this is good. So next one, next one on my list is good. I, I would enjoy doing this. Uh, you know, the big problem again, like with overconsumption and overproduction, and a big part of that is that we make new stuff when we don't need to. So we make new stuff when old stuff is available, which is ridiculous, really. If there's something which is old and is in good working order, then don't make new stuff to replace it. And I've got a big beef with that when it comes to wine and whiskey. So you have these bottles of wine in wine cellars, which are perfectly okay to drink. They're not being laid down to age. Same with whiskies. Those are the two particularly big candidates for this. They're just sitting in cellars everywhere, waiting. They're waiting to not get drunk. And people have them for their entire lives. Then they die, it gets passed down to their kids. And then their kids see these things as sentimental objects, so they don't drink them either. So I'm proposing a tax on the possession of alcohol or the long-term possession of alcohol. If you've kept a bottle of alcohol for more than three years, you start to get taxed on it. I know it's very hard to enforce, but I tell you what, the fucking tax man, good at his job, he'll sort that out. Let's not get into bureaucracy and admin right now. 
all I'm saying is there should be a tax on having a wine cellar or having really old bottles of whiskey. I don't mind the whiskey being aged for a long time. I don't mind wine saying, oh yeah, you should lie it down because the wine will improve. It's wine and whiskey, which is perfectly good to drink. It's in the bottle, it's there, and people are just not drinking it for the sake of it because it's it's in their cellar. No, fuck off, you have to drink it or you have to pay. That's the rule with that one, and I think that's a pretty fucking good one. I would very much enjoy drinking loads of vintage wine and, and whiskey in the name of the environment. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I'm going to get into controversial territory now. I'm going to say stop reading books. Stop buying new books, more specifically. Uh, secondhand books is fine. You know, they're chopping down their fucking rainforests to make books. Like, read it on a Kindle, mate. Read it on your computer. you got the computer anyway. So you might as well fucking read it off a screen. Absolutely taking the piss. People keep buying new books now in this day and age. This isn't like the 1700s. Read it off a screen like everybody else. Stop buying books. That's probably going to upset a fair few people, but okie doke, who cares? Um, If you're the sort of person who is anti-environmental stuff, um, which there might be a couple, but I guess if you are one of those people you have and you're still listening to this podcast at this point after 20-odd minutes of me chatting about it, then... Fucking fair fucks to you for putting up that. But yeah, I'd I'd imagine most of the anti-environment people have have probably signed off listening to this one now. But if you are one of those people, then stop being cunts to children who are trying to do something about it. There was the climate strike last week. There's all these people getting on their fucking high horse about these kids saying, oh, you should be in school because they did a strike, you know. If you want to do something for the environment, stop being cunts to children and let them fucking stand up for what they believe in. Fucking hell. The fact that people are so... Man, they got that, yeah, that girl, I can't, I did, can't remember her name or at least can't pronounce it, doing speeches to the UN. There's people being fucking rancid about her. You know, it, actually, the, the kids at the moment are behaving much more like adults than the rest of us. So, you know, stop being a bunch of fucking twats. <laughs> and speaking of people being cunts the last idea i have on this particular topic is stop going to see people who you hate so i actually quite enjoy this as an idea but if for example that you have a relative or it's probably most likely to be a relative Maybe, maybe a co-worker, I, I don't know. But most likely to be relative, I think, because you have to see them. Stop doing it. Because if you have that relative and you have to go and see them all the time, say it's your aunt, or maybe even you, a parent or a sibling or whatever, you know, no judgment here. You can hate who you like. But you have to then travel to see them. So you drive, I don't know, an hour or half an hour to see them. That is emissions from your car and then you might have a a meat-based meal while you're there it's all gonna be very bad for the environment if you just don't go and don't see people who you hate then that's going to be environmentally friendly and it'll be good for your personal well-being as well because you won't have to spend time with cunts who annoy you so if we just all sort of grow up and stop pretending that we have to like each other just because we're in the same gene pool, then I think the world would be a lot better off for it. So if you stop going to see people you hate, you probably save the world. If everyone stopped doing it, if everyone stopped driving to see people who they thought were cunts, to only exchange pleasantries, then fuck off and be mean about them on the way home, then we'd be just a really much better society and the planet would be a lot better off. So stop seeing people who you hate. That's that's my final one. Well, I guess my second final one, I should have said this earlier, is, you know, listen to this podcast. It's an environmentally friendly-ish podcast. There's not a lot of equipment involved. We speak about positive environmental things. So listen to the podcast. Uh, if you are this, listening to the podcast and, and you're new to it, then 
listen to the rest of it. Listen to all of it. Listen to the future episodes. Subscribe to it. I like it when people subscribe to it. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. So subscribe to the podcast. And speaking of which, you can sort of give it a good five-star rating if you like, or even a thumbs up depending on which platform you listen to it on. Uh, You can tell your friends about the podcast. You can say to them that you like it and that they should listen to it too. All in the name of saving the planet. Didn't actually mean to really get into this, but into it we are. Uh, yeah, save the planet. Listen to this podcast. That's that's the ultimate message. Uh, that, thanks for listening. That, that'll be pretty much it for today. Uh, I don't know what I'll be talking about next week. I don't know if I have any ideas for it, but you know, we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I quite enjoyed that podcast, actually. There's a lot of ideas packed into a short space of time there. So hopefully you get some sort of enjoyment out of that. And tune in again next week and we'll have we'll have more more good laughs. <laughs> Look, thanks for listening and I'll see you soon. Bye.